Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> it's the Big Trap and Q Show. They waiting for just another damn podcast. Now let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, y'all? It's the Big Trav and Q Show up in this piece. What's up, Q? What it do? Hey, what's up, Big Trav? How you doing, baby? Chilling, 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 man. What's going on with you? Man, I'm excited, man, as usual. The Big Trav and Q Show is back in effect for a full week. I'm excited to kick this day off because we got a slamming week coming up. Man, man it's been crazy, man. It's like a it's like a snowball rolling downhill, man. They just keep getting bigger. <laughs> it just keeps getting bigger, dog. But you know what? But you know you know what's cool about this, man. This is this is our automatic. This is just us. This ain't we not forcing nothing, man. This is our life. This is our life. We we just uh we just doing life and we just turn the camera on. Right? Am I right? <laughs> we I'm waiting on I'm waiting on you to tell me something I don't agree right, with. Man. Exactly, exactly. This is what we do. This baby. is what we I do, mean, man. Did I hit you with a did I hit did I hit you with a uh uh a headbanger last did. night? You did, you did. Okay. And, and you know well, what? He enjoyed it. I can tell he enjoyed it too. So, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, he is Friday's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. But, but let's 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 talk about Wednesday. We got Blaine Smith coming up, man. That is going to be he is an entrepreneur, former NFL football player. And also he's just a public speaker. Out the, I'm just excited to have that guy come on our podcast and grace us. With a few moments of his time, Trav, if you've never heard this guy, you are going to be blown away. That's what's up. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I I didn't get a chance to do a promo for him, but that'll that'll happen as soon as we out of here. So I'm and gonna- then and then don't forget, we got Thursday. We got Stephanie Hammond, the entertainment attorney. That's right. That's who we want to talk to. That's who we want to talk to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have about it's gonna be crazy. I'm gonna have about thirty questions for. Her. <laughs> I have thirty questions. I'm gonna have about thirty questions for her, man. We, but you, she, but you know what? I'm great. gonna let, I'm gonna let you take the lead on 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 uh, on Cheryl because my people are saying that I don't you know I overpower you all the time. So I'm gonna, I don't like that. I don't like that, man. We we're we're we so. we're, we're co-hosts. Yeah. We're co-hosts. So. Uh, you know, I'm gonna let you take the lead on that on on uh, on on Stephanie on Wednesday. So so get your oh, questions, man. I think I, th- I you know listen. You know, thanks yeah. for everybody who's tuning in and that's listening. First and foremost, let's take care of some business, Trav. Let's let everybody know who's just tuning in and has just listened to us for the first time. It's the Big Trav and Q Show. Check us out on our social media pages. We are on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram and on our YouTube page. If you do go on our YouTube page, please check us out. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us, um, you know, message, any type of topic. Just join in the party, man. Come on in and keep exactly. the big and cute. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Just like I say, I say, listen, just go to our YouTube, just hit subscribe, and then you can leave and you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to sit there. You don't even have to watch anything. Just We just need our subscribers up. So, uh, because that'll, that'll, uh, th- that'll put us in the next level of the podcast game. So th- the podcast game is judged by your, your views and subscribers on, on YouTube. So, uh, so yeah, uh, do us a big favor, all our family and friends. If you rock with me and Q, please go to the YouTube page and subscribe. We, we want to get that up. We want to at least, you know, well, let's, we want to hit at least a thousand. Give us, you know what, before the, before May 1st, we want to hit a thousand, before May first, so uh, I, I'm not quite sure where we I at. I think now. that's obtainable, man. I yeah, think I, I think obtainable. it is too. We just need to, like, like you. Uh, I think you you remember to hit it every time we start. So let's just continue to hit it. You know, remind everybody to go there, and then I'm a, I'm I'm gonna do some promos on the pages too, reminding everybody to listen here. I'm a I'm gonna provide them with the link, and I'm, I'm gonna make it even easier. I'm just gonna say, hey, just hit this link. It'll take you right there. Subscribe, and then you gone. We talking like 20, 30 seconds tops. So, and we'll have you out of there. Well, okay. We got all of the business out of the way. Uh, You know, you know, you know what I want to talk about off the rip. Did you see the Clark sisters movie? Did you see the Clark sisters movie, man? 
Please tell me you've seen yes, it. Yes. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, we're going to talk about that first, man. That was that was uh, my first impressions. That was uh, Joe Jackson Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> that was Joe Jackson Part 2. Or or that was Joe, Joe Jackson, the gospel version. You know, oh, man. Oh, man, they mom was a beast, man. That mom was a beast, man. What, what was that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, l- let me tell you what I thought about as I watched it take place during the movie. I I was one of I was one of those parents. I was one of those parents. You know, he, he, here's the deal with people like her and people like me. Uh, you know, people like her and people like me, we were we were once promising and whatever we're trying to get our kids to do, for me, it was like track and football. For her, it was singing. You know, you know, I, I kind of felt like, I kind of felt like that I didn't get an opportunity to achieve the things I wanted in the sports that I played. I thought that if I gave my kids the knowledge, the, the knowledge that that they could take it a step further than I did. You know, I was like, you know, so I kind of felt like. You know, my mind frame was like this, man, with my knowledge, man, my kids can go to the NFL. My kids can go to the Olympics with my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was an edge on all the other kids and all the other parents, man. So, so I really went hard, you know, and I was hard on, I was hard on my son. I was really hard on my son and, and, uh, and, and probably took some measures that other parents and other people wouldn't have been happy with. And the mom and the Clark sisters, she done the same thing. You know, it it seemed like um, it seemed like she came short of things she wanted to do in her career. Uh, Therefore, uh, she she thought the same thing that I thought that, hey, you know what? Hey, you know, I got the knowledge. If I if I start them with the knowledge that I have early oh, by the time they get to such and such and such and such, they're going to be they're going to be tearing it down. And so. Uh, and that's the problem with parents like us, you know, that was doing it like that. And I just seen the, you know, as I seen it, it just reminded me of what I done. It reminded me. And so, and so when you, when you didn't seen a train wreck before, you know, it's about to happen again, you know? <laughs> right, right. You're right about that. So, 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 so what, so what did you think? You know, um, you know, it was so interesting because it's like, Travis, it's kind of hard to like, compare errors you know what i mean it's like because we're now and we're in 2020 and it's like when you brought up the joe jackson comparison to that it's like back then in the 50s it's like he was hard he was driven but but when you look at the success afterwards it's kind of hard to say was that in vain because now when you look at parenting today versus back then they didn't give you that time to be out here to be free and loose and idle timed out. They wanted you to value your time. You, they knew that you had a short amount of time to maximize on anything that you were doing potential wise. And if you were going to do it, they wanted you to be serious about it versus today, you know? So I'm kind of like in the middle with that because I don't, I don't, I don't like to be too strenuous but I don't, but I do believe that if you have potential, that you need to maximize on that. So I'm kind of in the middle of that, you know? Well, well, just, just expanding on it. Um, okay. Okay. Because I've been through it and then, and I'm old enough to seeing other young parents go through it. Uh, and, and I've seen the results of both sides. And, and for me, for me, you know what, listen, when you, when you want your kid to be successful at something, as a coach, I'm talking from a coach now. As a coach, on your team, you got two types of players. You you got them players who just go out there and do it. You ain't got to tell them nothing. They self motivated, and then you got those ones that you gotta you know put your foot in their ass, you know. And so for me, those were my kids. My kids was the ones and. And, and as a coach, you really – you love the kids. You don't have to tell them nothing, man. They just take over the team. They can coach without you, you know. <laughs> I remember – it makes me think about 
Um, I remember when uh, Jim Jackson, I used to uh, be on the basketball team. I used to record the basketball games when Jim Jackson was in high school. And uh, and I hope that I hope Coach Graffine and and Coach Schroeder don't get upset with me for saying this. But I remember I used to um, I was like one of the assistant coaches on the team. So what what Jim used to do during the game, the game, you know what, the, a team will start catching up. Things will start breaking down. Things used to start breaking down for our team. And so Schroeder would jump up and he would try to he would try to set a play or he would try to tell him to do something, but Jim already knew what to do. Jim, so he would, so he would motion to the sideline for Schroeder to sit down. He would do sit down. He would do sit down hand motions, and it kind of looked bad. You know, his one of the players is telling his coach, "Man, sit down. I got it." So basically, what well, what would happen? This was what happened in the game. Like uh, Dave Smith was the point guard. When shit started to break down during the game, Jim used to come to the point and get the ball and reset the play up. He he would reset it back up get everybody back in their places, and then he'll have Dave come back and get the ball. Then he'll go back to his spot, and he'll be like, you know, now let's run it. You know what I'm saying? And so we were we would get out to dinner, and uh, and and Schroeder, Schroeder wanted to do something about it, but he just said, you know, he was upset about it because it embarrassed him, and and and, uh, and and they talked about it all of the time, and and they knew I hung with the they they knew I hung with Jim and those guys, so they would tell me, "Listen, you know what? Hey, be a good sport and and don't let this conversation leave the table." And it never did. I never said anything about. it. I didn't think it was a big deal. It was to me, it was just Jim being Jim, and uh, and so Jim Jim and I guess I'm saying I say all that to say this that Jim was one of those players that you didn't have to tell him to do anything. You know, he just knew what to do, and it makes you look like a great coach. And then you had players. Uh, you know, you had some kids that you had to put their foot, your foot in their ass, you know, and you needed you need to pump them up. You needed to motivate them. And and so it seemed like those were the ladies kids in the movie, the Clark sisters. It seemed like the Clark sister kids. They were kids that you had to motivate. I don't think any of them was go getters. I don't, matter of fact, none of them was one. Well, none of them go getters. She had to always put they put they uh, her foot in their ass. And so. um you know, hey, if you don't, but you you brought up Michael Jackson. Unless you unless you were going to buy a car, yeah, trade, exactly. Trade, trade your royalties in for, for a car. Now, yeah. now you br- you brought up Michael Jackson, and and you you go you followed up and said, well, does the risk outweigh the reward? And and so uh, I'm gonna you you lead me to believe that you saying, well, Joe Jackson done it. And it worked for him. So is that what is that what is that what you were implying that it worked for him? Is that is that what you were implying? Well, what I was what I was alluding to, what I was saying about the errors, is, is, is that you know how you say, okay, yes, it's easy to say that, but then when you look at the finished product and you say, man, this guy was hard on him, but he ended up being the biggest star, you know. But he had problems. That's my comeback. My comeback is, but he had issues. He had. He had issues. He had mental issues. He had mental issues as a result of how Joe Jackson treated him. So Michael Jackson didn't. He didn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't an all away success story. Of course, he he achieved uh, career wise. But we mm-hmm. all know that mentally that that he wasn't all there. You know, he thought it was okay to to sleep with kids. I mean, I love Michael Jackson, but he just done things that that wasn't okay with a lot of people. You know, okay, and- all right. Well, here's my push back to that. You watch all these unsungs, right? Mm-hmm. All the common denominators and all of them have the same storyline either drugs, s- drugs, uh, money, 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 money stealing, you know, or any, any, any of these storylines that you could think of. Somebody wasn't educated, somebody got over on somebody, or abuse, or whatever. Look at the DeBarge story. Look at what was going on in their household, you know, the molestations and stuff like that. What I'm saying is tragedy has a way of creeping in into every success story that's ever creeped out there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So does that, if you omit that part, does that take away of the, the triumphs of what people 
Because some people, they'll say you have to bust pipes just to be able to, to even touch gold sometimes. So what stories do you know that somebody didn't have some type of adversity that they had to go, that they had to go through? I get it. Uh, I get what you're trying to say. And, and, and for me, this is what, this is what you're saying to me. You're saying that even though Joe Jackson took that road, even though uh, Miss Clark took that road, even though I took that road, you know, and I'm here to attest that that it was more wins. It was more wins in that style than it was losses. And because my kids are are very structured, they didn't make it to the NBA. They didn't make it to the NFL. They weren't Olympians, but they turned out to be they got structure and they're they're good kids. So, you know, so I, I didn't really win. I, I didn't really lose in that, you know, because to me. Looking back on it, it was more important for them to be good people than for them to to make it to the NFL or become professional athletes, you know. So it was more important, and they are they they are some really good people. I love them. I I, I admire them. Uh, thank you, G. I, I thank the Lord all of the time. You know, uh, I love the way my kids. You know, they still involve me. You would think that they would get older and be like. Oh man, that's my old ass dad, man, I ain't messing with him, man. I, man, you know, yeah. but you know, because I was around them all the time. I coached all their teams. They done summer leagues. You know, we worked out. We were always together. But in my defense, I made it fun though. It wasn't. It wasn't all just hard work. It wasn't all like. It wasn't all guts, guts, guts. You know, right? It was. Right, it was right, glory. Right. It was reward. You know. And, uh, and I, and I understood that I was a fun guy, you know, I was a fun guy and, and I would work them hard in practice, but after we were, after we were done, we would like, we would go to the YMCA and, uh, the YMCA used to have a gymnastics room and you could, you could pay like $2 to go in the gymnastic room. They love the gymnastics room. So I would take them to the gymnastic room and, and now they got the trampoline place now. So, or we would go to Chuck E. Cheese or, you know, that's what they love back in the day. Or uh, you was putting in the time, Trav. Yeah, right, right. So so I balanced it. I balanced it, but but I but I was hard too. You know, it was some things that I that I would have took back. So back to the Clark sisters, though. um, Yeah, I had a problem with everything. I mean, she was she was tougher than I was. Oh no, (laughs) she was she was no. That was Joe. You said you would have been a fun dad compared to her. You know what made you? You know what made was she the way she done it so so hard. Her, 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 uh, her backup was the Lord. Her backup was the Lord and you couldn't question the Lord. You know, (laughs) she, she would go, she would go, you gotta, you gotta do this, this, and this. Cause if you don't, the Lord going to be mad at you, you know, (laughs) and you know, and you'll be like, damn, I can't win. You know, you'll be like, you'll be like, man, I'm gonna go to hell. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So she backed. Get it. She backed everything up with, "Hey, th- hey, listen. You know the Lord wants somebody that that'll fight. You know the Lord don't want no lazy person." She talked like that all of the time. Those were the statements she made to the kids. Um, but it started, you know what? But in the movie, as as things started to unravel, it just reminded me. It reminded me of me and my kids because. It did. I mean, because I remember at one point, um, let me tell you, just right quick, because I, I hate harping on me. Let me right quick. Let me tell you what it backfired with my son, because let me tell you what happened. I drilled him. I drilled him all the way up until probably seventh grade. Yeah, I did. All the way up to seventh grade. His mom come to me and no, I take that back. I take that back. I, I grilled him all the way up to high school. And so uh, once he got to high school, his mom said, why don't you give him a break now? She said, you do everything for him. She said, you, you plan out everything for him. You, you tell him when he got to do what, when, where, how she said, give him a chance to try to do it on his own. And I did. I, I, he started his freshman year over at central Catholic and long story short, I let him, I gave him a chance to do it on his own. And, And he, and he just was a little boy. And what happened was, because I didn't give him maybe the freedoms that he thought he should have had when he was younger, you know, he was kind of wild with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was all over the girls, you know, he, he became a ladies man. Uh, 
he, Sean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you know, his grades wasn't the best, you know, and, and uh, what I feared had happened. And so, you know, so uh, the mom was like, Hey, let him. And when, even when he got off track, the mom was like, Hey, let him go. Let's see if he can get back on track, you know? And, uh, and we'll have to have Sean on the show. I don't want to get, I don't want to embarrass him, but you know, but she told me, to yeah, get, let him, let him. Yeah. Tell yeah. Let him yeah. tell his own. Yeah. Story. So, you I know, you. uh, so, you know, she said, give him a chance. He got off track. She said, give him a chance to fix it, you know? And, and I done that. And then the rest is history, but, um, uh, but no, she stayed on them. I meant they were, she was to me, she was making them live the life that she wanted. She wanted to have the hit records. She wanted. Crap, to- sometimes that happens when you're living vicariously through your child. I see that. And it doesn't even have to be in entertainment. It's like you missed your time up in the sun. Right, so what right. you're trying to do is live vicariously through your children. You know what I'm saying? So, you you know, like I said, man, you know, you know, there's a v- variety of different parenting skills and how people you know, come up, you know what I'm saying? Look, you know, I'll put myself out there. My father wasn't there, you know, when I, when I, um, when I was raised. So I started early on, you know what I'm saying? I remember going and getting, you know, my, my license early to start working my first job, you know, I wanted to go and, and be a provider. And, you know, those are things. So I was, I was what you would call a self-starter. I was a self-starter. You didn't have to, you didn't have, my, my predicaments, basically, I could look left and I could look right. And my predicaments motivated me. I didn't need no, I didn't need a pep talk. You know, I didn't need somebody to point things out to me. I could look left and look right and see poverty left and poverty right. And I could say, no, this is not for me. But to other people, some people will be okay. They could see the problems with it, but some people will be okay with it. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. And I and I don't base that off of verbal. I base that off of action. If you if you're not okay with something, in my opinion, you will show by action by doing whatever you need to do to get out of that situation. And I and I remember listening to. Um, Kevin Hart's uh, documentary, uh, Don't Fuck It Up. And he was saying, in layman's terms, what motivates him even to this day for being whatever he needs to be and why he drives himself is being broke. I hear that all the time. A lot of people, you know, uh, Master P says he still acts as though he don't have nothing in his bank account to this day. So now, does that mean that you got to be money driven? I'm not seeing that. That's not the message that I want to put out. But I do believe that you have to find something that motivates you. And it doesn't have to be. If education is not your thing, that's fine. If military is not your thing, that's fine. Entertainment is not the thing. You do, at some point in your life, you have to find that niche. Well, you have to find something that's going to motivate you or because if you don't, you're going, you're going to have a, a miss Clark or a Jill Jackson there <laughs> to get you back or, on track. Or, or you're going to have that, or, or you're going to have that good steward, or, you know, you're going to have that good warden, <laughs> you know, saying lock up at 12, you know? Right. Right. You know what? Let, let's talk about some, some things that happened in the movie because okay. uh, you know, the situation, with her husband, how she played her husband, man. Um, mm. You know what? Listen, okay. Let me start by saying this. You know, I don't like to. Right. Quite, I don't like to question nothing concerning the Lord. You right. know, <laughs> and and a, and a woman like her, the, the way she was making her statements, it made you. It made it impossible to oppose her because she made it seem like if you disagreed, you disagreeing with the Lord. <laughs> and so, so all her statements was backed up by, by the Lord, by Jesus. So you couldn't, so, so she made, she convinced herself that her way was the right way. And what she's saying was the, what she was saying was the right way. And what she was doing was the right way. She convinced herself because the Lord, 
you know, sent it. The Lord sent it. The Lord told me, you know, right. those, those were her, those were her presets to all her statements, you know, and, and, and you seen the kids and the husband gasp because, because you seen them, the gas was because they was like, ah, oh, she brought up the Lord. I got to do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know? Have, you ever saw, have you ever saw, have you ever saw the movie? Uh, have you ever, first of all, do you know who Bill Maher is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know who Bill Maher is. Okay. In like 2012 or 11, he made a movie called Religious. You ever, you ever, did you ever hear about this? No, 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 I didn't. Well, his stance is, he comes from a position of, I don't know. So he made a whole movie based off of basically uh, religion. It was basically a religion type film. And so what he wanted to do was he wanted to challenge some of the myths of the Bible and, or, or the Quran. Or, so what he called himself doing, the whole movie was him sitting down with, you know, Christians, to Muslims, you know, uh, just every facet of any of anything religious related. You know, he would talk about, you know, the you know the Bible and the Moby Dick and you know the whale and you know challenging all these. <laughs> different, you know, he was just he, right. he you know and and one thing he was particularly he went to uh, in Atlanta and uh, I think it was I think it was Bishop Long when he had a conversation with him and. He was basically saying, so on a regular basis, you're bringing everybody into your church and you got this big old church and you're jumping out of this BMW. And, you you know, so what he was saying is, so you're using manipulations of the word in the Bible to conjure people to come in at your bidding. It's the word. It's the actual word. You're just putting your own subcontext onto the wording to twist and manipulate an A and an A uh, to like get people to do your bidding, which ultimately means going in their pockets and bringing their money to you. We could do, so, we could do a whole show on that. <laughs> so, so I, I just say what you, when you say that it was just that was movie, that movie brought that, that, that movie came up to me because I saw that movie and I was like, I was thrown away with it because he wasn't trying to, the whole the whole movie wasn't based on him trying to say he's an atheist or he's a Christian, he's religious, spiritual. He just wanted to say, okay, I'm going to put all these facets out here and then you draw your own conclusion at the end. But I know plenty of people that was like her, that were just, her just, their soul just. I still know. I still know plenty of people like her. <laughs> that's, 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 that's Bible oriented. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Trav, I remember coming up where, you know, it was, you was looked down upon by the, having, a, having a child out of wedlock. I remember how, you know, premarital sex. You weren't supposed to move in with a person before you would met. You know, I remember when well, those were like. Dominant. Well, those were those dominant. Things, th- th- listen, those things were bad then, and they, and they're still bad now. But 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 let's 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 talk about something else that happened in the movie. Okay. The the choir, you know, they went to go perform on a secular show, and the church had a problem with it. You know, they didn't. They won a Grammy, and they went to go perform at the Grammys, and they tried to put the mom out to church. Um, you know, they, uh, you know, my mom told me that. You know what? Um, she told me that sanctified churches. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm, I don't want to corner myself and say I don't know a lot about churches or churches. But you know, I, <laughs> but my mom told me like a sanctified church are supposed is supposed to be like the strictest of churches, and 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 they said that they said this is a sanctified church, and and I remember. Uh, did you catch in the scene? She had a problem with her daughter. I mean, her daughter came home from work with pants on and she made her go put a skirt back on, you know? And, and so, uh, I mean, it was just, uh, and I, you know what? I don't want to say that stuff is hardcore because, cause I've heard, I've heard and seen that pretty frequently, you know? Right. But, uh, and so, again, so that, 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 that again, wasn't, Trav, that, that wasn't a surprise. Yeah. You're yeah. You're talking errors. You're talking, yeah, you know, you're talking fifties and the sixties. You know, this totally 
it's like getting in a time machine and going all the way back and torn, showing youngsters about slavery. What? You only can read about, you can only read about it so much, but if you didn't grow up in that time period to understand what was going on, it's only so much. You got some grains of it now, but we didn't live in the midst of that stuff. Yeah, you and, know, and that stuff happened. Well, the movie happened during the same time. I mean, the girls, the right. girl, the girls, the same age as me. So, so that stuff was happening. You know, like uh, mid eighties, early nineties. So Correct. all that, all that right. stuff was happening. Right. So, but no, but. But that stuff hasn't went away. I mean, you know, that stuff, it was, it was, it was no, bad. But it, it's not, it's not as dominant. We just don't hear about it. We, we don't, we don't hear right. about it's, it. It's, it's, it's but, not as dominant. But as I got, I got several, uh, uh, uh Facebook. What about, what about Sanford and Son? You remember that one segment where, <laughs> uh, where Esther, where she, <laughs> When Fred was you trying just, to get rid you of just, somebody. You just say Esther and that, and that shit funny, dog. <laughs> Esther, you old, you old heathen. <laughs> where, you remember the one episode where Fred needed needed her to drum up her choir to help uh, get this one tenant out, and then and then she was like, "Well, Fred, now are you going to allow us to use your home? You know, to have church?" And- <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a bad deal. I don't remember it, but it sounds like a bad deal. <laughs> and so, so she flipped the. So she flipped the the, uh, the choir on him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they just started going around. And, oh, holy oh Jesus. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. I do remember that one. <laughs> so my but. point, my point is, is that these are. I mean, you have these facets of 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 upbringing and things of that matter. But you know, what's not being talked about as much in this context text of what this conversation is about is duality what man and woman but in you the know same but moment. this movie but the way the way the mom handled everything you just we're gonna need you, you guys comments on this because you know i don't know when you in, when you insert the lord it, that it makes things tricky because the way she handled her the way she handled her husband the way she divorced mm-hmm. him you know right. you know basically they painted the picture like like the husband was getting in the way on what she was trying to do and and, and she divorced him, you know? Right. And so the kids was like, where's daddy at? And, and, and she was just like, he was getting in our way and he had to go, you know, <laughs> that was, that, that was, that was how like matter of fact, she said it to Listen, the kids, man. Uh, that was just, Look, you know, I, damn. But I she, know people but she, that are say, keep their eye on the prize. They don't want nothing to take them or get them out of pocket and what the goal and what the mission is. Listen, it and wasn't that right. that means sacrificing, if that means sacrifice, listen, I, listen, let me be clear. I don't condone it, but I understand it. I understand when you are so focused on something and you know that this particular situation can change your life for wherever it is. You know what I'm saying? I understand about being so focused on that and you're not going to allow a relationship, anything to, do, to, to take you out of, out of that mission. You know what I mean? So, so she, so she left, so she lost perspective is what happened. That's what, that's what happened. She lost perspective, which means you to know, us, to us, but maybe not. I, you know what? I know he's no longer here. God bless Joe. I know Joe Jackson. He's no longer here. But that's an interesting question that you bring up, Joe. Both of them, both point, of them lost perspective. Point, both of them lost right, perspective. But, but I would love to hear them respond. Did any point in time, anything that you would do? Because I can, I remember so many interviews that that man did. I don't think anybody ever posed that question that way that you just said. Joe, did you ever lose perspective on what was going on? Oh, definitely. He definitely did. You know, no, 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 no. I, 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 you and I can speculate that, right. but I'm saying with, you know, with her, you know, I know the mothers, you know, obviously, you know, probably no, no longer, but I'm saying that when you talk about those people, and from what I've heard people say is not correlating to them too, but look at, look at what everything I've done, look at where you at right now. You wouldn't have this, you wouldn't have this. If I wouldn't have did what I did. 
So you can thank me later. You know how some people but, would say that, but you know, but you know, but I got, I got so many, I, I got so. If I was to talk to her, I would, or her, or Joe, I would have. Let's just stick with her because that's what we're talking about. I right. would, I would have so many comebacks. You know, I meant, you know, uh, one of my comebacks would be that you didn't balance the kids. You know, I meant, you know, you didn't, you, you got to balance the kids. I mean, when you were, when you're doing something like that, you have to make sure that the kid still get the kid stuff. I mean, cause you, cause you're developing a, a child, you're developing right. a kid. And when you, right. de- and when you're developing your child and you got mm-hmm. them going hard on singing or whatever it is you want them to do, you got to right. have perspective. You got to have balance And the back. And the balance I is, agree. Hey, let me take them to, to, uh, let me take them to a uh, granny world. Let, <laughs> let me t- let them, let, right. you know, Chuck E. Cheese, you know, let me, let them go to the movies. That's why the one girl, uh, I think it was Dorena, the one that was off the chain. I, damn, she ended up with like seven kids. But anyway, and, and, and see, hey. but <laughs> what I hated about that part was because because the mom, because she ended up with seven kids, now the mom, the mom can use her as an example now. See, she can go, see, see, see what would happen if you didn't listen to me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I hate. She had a, she had an example of of how things would have turned out if you didn't listen to her. So I really hate this, that that she had that in her back pocket to uh to to bring up in an argument with the other kids. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty well, sure it's, it, it's just like the movie. It's just like the movie Sparkles. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about the original, not the 2006. I mean 2012 remakes with Whitney Houston. The original one with Irene Cara. Yeah, you don't probably know nothing about that trap. But when you talk about Sparkle, when you talk talk about the three sisters, although they they were up under the same firm grip of the mother, the mother was the same way. But you had that rebellious one who was sister. Sister was the rebellious one. She was not trying to be traditional at all. She wanted to be free spirited and she wanted to make her own decisions and you know, I didn't care. I loved her two older sisters, but she was like, well, what about mama? We, we got to listen to what mama says because mama is the, is, 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 is the, the holier than I, you know, she's the picture of Oracle. Like she knows she's the unwilling of knowing everything. And I don't know if you ever saw the movie. You ever saw Sparkle, by the way? Yeah. Yes. I didn't see the older one, uh, the old, the old people one, but I seen the new, the, the uh, young people one. Well, you stop that. You, st- you stop that. The, first of all, the original is way better. And I know people in the chat was be like, yeah, the, the original one was better. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to the Whitney Houston one. I mean, but come on. Let's, you know, Irene Cara, man, you know, let's talk about it. Well, well, but what I'm saying on that is that you had the, you had that mother who came, who says, back to your point earlier, Travis about you know living vicariously through your kids. You don't want you you know you don't want your kids to end up like you, or you want your kids to be better than you. You know whatever the whatever motivates that mother. But then you have some mothers today who are either or, who just allows their children to run them up and do whatever they want to do. And let them just line, you know, you know, land wherever they want. And then that child will later on to come down and say, well, mama, how come you didn't, why come you couldn't have been this way with me or that way? You right. Know what I'm saying? Right. So, which, you, so, which makes me think, yeah. which, which makes right. me think that if she would allow her husband to help out and, uh, but from the beginning of the movie, she was off the rails from the beginning. I mean, she didn't. The movie started with no perspective. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I mean, she she just started. She she had a plan. To me, right. to me, she had a plan, and her yes, plan and her plan was from the Lord. And mm. and when it was from the Lord, you can't you can't tell her. That's why she. That's why it was so easy to divorce her husband, because because th- to her, the Lord was telling her that listen. My job is to make these girls great and the best singing group in the world. This is from heaven. This is from the gods, you know, mm-hmm. and my, and my supposedly quote unquote husband, he's getting in the way he's getting in the way. 
and mm-hmm. and she made it for her the, the the divorce and her husband it came down to my lord or my husband and the lord won so it was easy for her so she wasn't let she wasn't going to let nothing get in her way i mean even when the kids were bottled she overrid them you know and uh but when the uh and then uh what's her name i think it was it was uh the the Deronda, Karen? No, the Karen? one. No, oh, no, no. The, okay. the black sheep one. I think it was Deronda, or whatever her name is. I forget right. her name. Anyway, but mm-hmm. but remember when the part in the movie where, where when she finally left and she dropped all them gems, like you know, she dropped all them gems on everybody at the table. Like, mm-hmm. mama, listen, mama, you don't let us be kids. You know, I want a mama. I don't want a. I don't want a choir director at home. I want a mama. You know, we don't get to do what we want. It's always what you want. You know, and Mm -hmm. and then she came back and was like, no, it's what the Lord won't. And then she said, I can't tell, you know. Mm. And so and 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 Twinkie, 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 she held on in that conversation. You know, that sunk in with her. And that's what and that's why she was the next one to leave. You know, Yeah, but then what about the term that was that was always thrown around when I was younger about being, you know, young girls being fast. You know, your little fast ass. You know what I'm saying? I used well, to hear that a lot. Well, up. well, well, that's fine. But I, I thought she was. I thought she done that. That was pushback. You know, the mom was pushing hard on them. That was just pushback. That was pushback. You know, mm-hmm. when you when you gonna come hard like that, you gonna have pushback. You gonna have pushback right. from somebody. And so, uh, so she she was the one that done the pushback. She done the pushback. Um, she was the one, the rebellious one, um, you know, when, and when you're like that, when you a person with no, no perspective and you, and you a person with no balance, you need to be checked every now and then you're going to get checked. You know I mean, you, you can't, you ain't gone, you ain't gone, you ain't going to go the whole train ride without getting checked, you know? <laughs> so you're you going to get checked and, and, and the daughter checked her husband, try, her, her husband tried to check her but she wasn't having it. But her daughter checked her in front of all the other girls. And, you know, it reminded me of that scene in Iron Man two, when, uh, the, I don't know if you remember it or not, because you're not, you're not a big Marvel fan like me, but, um, <laughs> Hardy, har, har. remember he, he had the two whips. Remember he had the, the electronic whips and he went on the track. He attacked, uh, Tony Stark in the race car on the track and he, right. he failed. And, uh, and so Tony was like, you know, Hey, Hey, he said, good attempt, but you fail. He said, I fail. He said, but now it's going to be blood in the water. He said, people, I show people that you're vulnerable. And so that was what, that was what the black sheep girl done. You know, they, she showed them, she get, uh, she, 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 uh, she threw out the game. She threw out some things for them to think about. You know, right. and so she basically put blood in the water, and then that was what that you know the other girls came next. You know, then Twinkie. That's when Twinkie was like, "Hey, listen, I think I need some dick too." You know, <laughs> right. Twinkie, like I need to get broke off too. And she met the dude, and the dude turned out to be a a real shithead. But, um, but then and then everything just started to break down. Everybody else got married, and and then because Twinkie was the leader, she was. She had a problem with Twinkie, you know, moving on because Twinkie was like her junior, you know, that was like her assistant, you know, Mm -hmm. that was. And so, you know, she called herself taking a rest or taking a break and and thought Twinkie was going to take him to the promised land. And and Twinkie was like, I'm trying to get out of this. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but anyway, um, you know, mom died. I don't mean you listen. I don't I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm giving it away for everybody. But you know what? Your ass should have seen it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well do you what do you where do you rank it at do you give it a do you give it a a, a must see um yeah see? yeah it is it is give it a must see? Uh, only okay. because you know what we're we're quarantined and and we didn't seen everything you know <laughs> we're right. we're quarantined and we didn't seen everything so so we needed a shot in the arm you know, I mean, I mean, how much Netflix Netflix can you watch and how much binging can you watch? How much damn love and hip hop can you watch? You know, <laughs> you know, how much YouTube can you watch? And so that was a well, blessing. That was right I, on time. I hope that I hope they're tuning in to watch the Big Trav and Q show on YouTube. 
I want them to watch that one a lot. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I hope they You too. know, a lot of content on that page, by the way. I mean, come on, Travis. Speaking Think of about it, speaking man. of uh, he has some great interviews on there. That's some right. Speaking interviews. of uh uh Big Trav and Q show, we got a station identification right quick. It's the Big Trav and Q show. They waiting for just another damn podcast. Now let's go. Go, go, go. That's right. That's right. In the first hour, we was talking about the Clark sisters movie, man, how how Miss Clark was just a beast, man. The Joe Jackson of the gospel world. She was just putting it down, man. If if you don't if you don't do it, I'm going to be mad and the Lord going to be mad. So you ain't got no choice. You're going to disappoint everybody if you don't do it my way. (laughs) (laughs) She put it down. Oh, man. Okay, All right. Um, I tell you what. um, Any any other notes? from the movie um you know mom end up passing away uh dorinda i believe listen guys i hope i'm getting her name right i think it was dorinda she showed up at the end of, she showed up at the funeral and, and, and clowned out clowned out <laughs> she you know you know that person that family member that show up he, we ain't we ain't seen them in two three years and they they show up at the funeral and just show out that was my mama right. t- that was my mama too uh-huh. <laughs> you know uh, and, and I, them all my seven kids, and y'all, yeah, 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 that's why I wasn't around. You know, that's what she said. She said she she hadn't been around because she got seven kids, and and Mama wasn't cool with it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, she showed out at the end. Um, but the other sisters, everybody is doing well. Uh, as a DJ, uh, who who uh who uh, gets into the, the gospel, who plays gospel music. I know that the, the Clark sisters are, they're still doing good to this day. They still got hits. Uh, and so, uh, but check the movie out. You know, um, I have, I got AT&T TV. So uh, I can, I can go in the search. I can search it and watch it anytime. Uh, so if you got any of the streaming services, if you can get it on any of the streaming services, I hope you can just go search it and then watch it. Um, but but it was on it was on Lifetime, so I don't know how uh, I don't know how Lifetime does it. I don't know if uh, it comes on like maybe. Look like cute and it hung itself up. Gosh, to be more careful. Hey, baby, you hear me? <laughs> Gosh, to be more careful. Hey man, call back. Anyway, cute and hung itself out. I'll wait for him to call back. But uh but yeah, you know, just to wrap that up, you know, that was a good look. If you get a chance, the Clark Sisters movie. Uh just some other notes on the movie. It was executive produced by uh, Mary J. Blige, uh Missy Elliott, and Queen Latifia. Hey man, the Clark Sister movie uh conversation was so riveting, man. You just you had to hang up on me, right? I know it's crazy. <laughs> I got a story that I wanted to tell you. I don't know. Do you um do you check out or are you familiar with Polestar? With who? Polestar. Polestar. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Well, basically, because I'm in a world that you probably in the world of promoting, it's a great tool that we go, we go and check on as promoters. Right. And then we want to know anything about what's going on in the industry right now. Well. There's an interesting story that's going on right now on a uh, poll star where this is about live nations and it's saying live nation executives take pay cut company boost as 8,000 shows have been impacted by the Corona nine stoppage live nation executives are taking pay cuts or deferring salaries altogether as part of a cost reduction and cash management programs from the company, which today has also announced moves to boost, uh, you know, include a new revolving, you know, credit facility that the president and the CEO says will help the company ride out the economic trials brought on by the uh, pandemic. That sounds. That so sounds. That sounds fair. Sounds fair. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's just basically. Uh, you know, talking about a lot of the things that's been going on, you know, about how many uh, shows, how much money that, you know, the entertainment uh, industry has been uh, has been uh, leaking. And, you know, they like to use, you know, legal terminology like that, you know. 
Uh, well, so well, go ahead, if go you ahead. ever get a chance, if you ever get a chance, you know, definitely check out Polestar. Polestar. Uh, yeah, Polestar. Okay, I'll check that out. So that's, what is that? Is that entertainment, promoter news? I mean, is that what that's about? Is that what the website yeah. is about? Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll check that out. It's, like, if I want to know anything, like, if you ask me about um, <clears throat> Bad Boy, the tour, how much did it gross? Where did it where did it play at? How do I know how do I know negotiate rates? How do I know what I want to do a show on that? You know what? I want Blake to come on the show and I want you and Blake. We I want you I want Blake to come on and I want you guys, we want to go over the rates for artists. I think people are really get a kick out of that. You know, you know, we wanna for you guys you guys to go over the the formula or the process in putting a concert together or a comedy show together so uh hey get at get at uh get at blake and tell him that we want to bring him on the show so you guys can talk to us about the process of putting together a show and and maybe even discuss the fees you know what what artists you know uh you know grab some artist fees and and, and talk about that you think that'd be a good show you think that'd be a good topic if people want to hear about it, yeah, I don't mind telling anybody about. You I, know, think what we do. I think that'll be interesting. I think that'll be interesting to to hear, you know, the process of putting it together, uh, how the promoters get paid, how the artists get paid. You don't not not to get into specifics, but you know, you know, I tell you what, me and you will talk about it off the air, and then we'll so we'll see if we can put it together. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move right on. I want to talk about this. Okay, okay, this is the this is the headline. It says Dwayne Wade takes exception to Shaq. Uh, yeah, takes exception yeah, yeah, yeah. for Shaq leaving him off the 10 finals, the, the top finals performance list. So basically, uh, Shaq took to Instagram and, uh, yeah, it was Instagram. No, Twitter. Shaq took to Twitter and he listed his top 10 players uh, that performed the best in NBA finals. And he and he left his teammate in Miami, Dwayne Wade, off. And Dwayne Wade was he was like, he, he, yeah, I got a problem with it. He what he done was he listed it, and then in the comments, Shaq said, "Do you agree?" And Dwayne Wade came on the post and said, "No, I do not agree." And so everybody's been talking about it. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you guys want to, you know, read along with me, I think I got it on. I think I got it posted already on all our pages. But I'm gonna I'm a, I'm gonna read it off. Um, I don't know if he I don't know if he has it in order, but I'm gonna read the order. He got him he got him he got him listed one through ten. And mm-hmm. uh, and what we want you guys to do we we're gonna debate it, but we want you guys to leave in the comments after we read the list or you see the list. Do you think Dwayne Wade should have been included? Me personally, I looked at the list and I said, I, I, who would you take off? I'm like Dwayne Wade ain't <laughs> listen. You you eleven. I'm like, you know, I, honestly, I looked at the list and I was like, you know what, you eleven, you you eleven. So let me let me go down. Um, this is what we're gonna do. I'm a, I'm gonna read them from one to ten, and and say if you agree, and if you don't agree, we'll we'll talk about it. Okay, Michael Jordan. Agree. Okay, uh, Shaquille O'Neal. I agree. Now, I just want to remind everything what this is. These these are the best performances, that, you know, like the best games. Like somebody to hit like fifty points, had fifteen rebounds, had a hundred assists. I mean, you know, the, these are the guys that perform the best overall in finals conference in in, uh, in NBA finals history. Okay, LeBron James. Hmm. Over Dwayne Wade, I, I say yes. Yeah, I say I, I, I have to agree. Yeah, because Dwayne Wade really only had one good final. He had that one good game with my. Travis, sometimes that's all you need. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. But no, 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 no. We're just well, you just debated LeBron or him. I'm just talking about you debating both of them. And to me, no, I had to, I had to go and I had to tune in to. Dwayne Wade's moments versus okay. LeBron's moments. Okay. So I had to look at it. Well, that's I know that already. So it it don't compare. So okay. 
Magic Johnson. Hell no. He's not replacing Magic Johnson. And what do you say? Agree. Larry Bird. Agree. Hell no. Hell to the no. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to skip this next one because this is the person that everybody think that he should have replaced. And we're going to come back to him. Okay. okay. Uh, Akeem Olajuwon. He had two back to back. Oh yeah, rings. definitely, definitely. He he's not mm-hmm. taking Akeem Olajuwon off the list. For me, he's not taking right. him off the list. You agree? Agree. Tim Duncan, not happening. Not <laughs> happening. <laughs> not happening. Uh, Kobe Bryant, ain't no way, dog. Ain't no way in twenty hells. <laughs> you mm. you was Kobe little brother. So for that for that matter you for that reason you are not taking Kobe's spot Bill Russell nope he got 10 rings <laughs> okay now let's go back to to Kevin Durant he he thinks he deserves to be on there before Kevin Durant no 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 he he, he don't believe it every everyone is saying that mainly mainly my man Alvin Chapman said it, you know, it's really just him really uh, said that, uh, uh, that he thinks Durant shouldn't be on there. And I, 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 I don't recall if Alvin Ke- wanted to Kel- Kevin Durant. Yeah. Kevin Durant. Uh, man. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of hard, man. Cause Durant, I'm, he balled. Let, me, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Uh, Kevin Durant got two finals MVPs and Dwayne Wade got one. Dwayne Wade got one, but, but Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant averaged 33 points in the last championship. He, he averaged 33 and nine in, in the last, the last championship they won. Easy for me too. It's, it was easy. Right. for me. Uh, It's Kevin. Yeah. Durant. Uh, no, he's not taking Kevin Durant off the list. <laughs> right. Now, yeah. now, if I wanted to have an honorable mention, even before he's even eleven, Dwayne, Dwayne is even, eleven. Dwayne is eleven. But even, even over, even over Dwayne Wade is people are just forgetting about how dominant Isaiah Thomas was in the finals, man. Uh, you being biased. <laughs> I, you, you being okay, biased. Who the the man scored? 30 points on one leg in the third quarter to come back and to win a championship over LA and back to back championship. I got a couple other arguments. I got, I, I mean, I got, AI, AI had a dominant playoff run. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, so, but no, but he didn't get there enough. No, 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 no. We talking about finals, N- not on the way. No, he we talking about finals. His one final run that he made. It was good. He went against, he did. He didn't win it. So, well, let me ask you this: Is he is Shaq saying winning it or just getting it? Uh, no, 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 no. Just finals. To, well, for him, the way I understand, let me let me read the question again. It says it says the top ten finals performance lists, performers, not performance, performers. So individuals. So individual performances. So, uh. So it could be, I guess the interpretation could be one game, their their best game out of the, out of the series, or or their best. Well, man, per- that game one AI against against LA, man. I mean, come on, man. He he single handedly won that. I, game I wouldn't put AI himself. ahead of him because he's been the more he's had more opportunities in the finals than AI. Not, I, but what I'm just saying though, Trav, you got to recognize AI mm-hmm. to go up against that power. That power punch of of what he had to go through. Yeah. Single. He had got, no. <laughs> let me tell you who else you got, man. You got you got a lot of other people that you could consider before Dwayne Wade, like Kareem, uh, Carl Malone, uh, mm. um Doc, Reggie Miller. Dr. J. Reggie nah, Miller. nah, I wouldn't put I wouldn't for me, I wouldn't say Reggie Miller, but Dr. You, Julius Irvin, yeah, Dr. I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, I take that back. I, I you know, but no, he, you know what? He still wouldn't be, he wouldn't, he wouldn't take Dwayne away for me. He wouldn't for me. He wouldn't Re- Reggie wouldn't take Dwayne, Dwayne Wade away from me. 
Man, um, you guys. Akeem, no, great. not not Akeem, not Akeem Elijah one. Okay, I'll just stop right there. I'll stop right there. So, so our our result of this, our consensus is that he 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 could not replace anybody on the list. No, and it's tough. And I and I and I understand. I I I I, I can see his point, even though he hasn't really has. Did he ever articulate why? He had a no, no, no. The only response we got was, like I said, Shaq. No, po- I don't. <laughs> you, you don't. Shaq posted it, and 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 Shaq included a, "Do you agree?" And he and Dwayne Wade responded, "No, I do not agree." So that's okay. So so that's, so that's the only thing we have right now. If Trav decided to go on and pull a Charlemagne on me and do big things and win awards and just left little old Q in the dust and he's doing things, but whoever the first person who he started out with and the first person and he, I, and you put your all time list together of everybody who you, you've either did a pat podcast with or did on. No, them. no, no. And I tell you, you switch it, and then, switch it to DJ and switch it to DJ and switch it to DJ instead of podcast, <laughs> switch it to DJ do, do 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 I do I what? think do I think I'm one of the ten best DJs in Toledo? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> I, already, I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> but but you know what? That's speculatory. That's speculatory, though. You know, I mean, because it's different. You know, it's hard to do it with DJs because well, first of all, at the end of the day, it's that's that man's opinion. That's his opinion, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. How can you get mad at his opinion? And I see. The one thing about when you start doing lists, it's kind of like what Super MC was telling us. It's like when you start putting lists together, on you know, you're gonna you're gonna elevate some other people, and then you're gonna love other people, you know. Right, and it's right. like it's all subjective, man. You right. know, but Dwayne, but just relax. But it's awesome content for for the Big Trap and Q show. <laughs> but here's some other news for you, man. Okay. I don't know if you know about this. Okay. Polestar, I'm referencing Polestar again, projects 2020 total box office would have hit 2.2 billion. Polestar quarterly numbers are in, and the preliminary gross revenue for the top 100 tours was at a 10.9% over 2019's record setting year, 840 million for 2020 while tickets sales rose up to about you know 4.4.5 percent to 9.4 million based on that growth polestar can project that the year's box office would have reached 12.2 billion in first in the first quarter percentage growth remain consistent polestar can also forecast that the live industry would lose up to eight Point nine billion of revenue if the rest of 2020 was to remain dark and a worst case scenario certainly not is what is expected and you really that's a lot of money now, now you kept saying box office were you talking about movies or, or, or entertainment or everything gross total gross so basically when you look at Ticketmaster, they're getting all the numbers oh, okay see when when i i'll have to i'll have to show you how how Polestar brings their numbers in. But just on layman's terms, every gross revenue stream that comes in is tally, you know, event break, you know, all of them, they're all, everybody's tallying in and they're saying, okay, what was your gross numbers on, you know, we can't do a show like that. But I'm just going to, I'm just trying to give you, because I know some people like you will be like, where's those numbers are coming from? But they're just bracing that off of gross sales. So, all the numbers that are gross in, let's say, Ticketmaster, all the outlets and all the revenue that's driven in, and they say collectively from all the tours that are gathered in, from all the tours overseas, internationally, whatever. That's anybody that's ever went out, that's how they come with that total number of the $12.2 billion and how they lost and they project that from the 8.9, and that's how they get the difference between that. Or how much money they're saying. So every day that's being lost, they come up with a percentage of number totally. Um, and those numbers come from 
um, of course, Live Nation, AIG, all the other people that report those numbers in. It's just like following the stock market, but it's in the industry. If you want to know how much money is being lost on revenue, that's merchandising, by the way, Trav. What I'm saying is it's a whole tutorial of different revenue streams that are being lost when you don't have artists that are touring, when you don't have artists that are out there uh, earning wages. Okay. Well, that's all. Awesome. Pay off them contracts. They got to pay them contracts off too. So you know, it's a lot of money. You know. So yeah. to sum up, what you said is that um, because of the 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 lockout, the quarantine, uh, there's uh, the entertainment industry is taking an L. Is that basically what you said? You know, I love it. I love layman terms, Trav. <laughs> layman, lay, layman terms, Trav. It's like, don't talk around me, brother. Just hit me, just hit me straight with the lingo. Because you, 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 you was talking promoter talk there, so uh, you probably lost some people. But basically, that's what he's saying. The quarantine, it's just more evidence that... Uh, but well, you know, I had to give people context. Right, on exactly. How those, numbers, how those numbers comes in. You know, they want to know, when you, when, you, when you are a single consumer, and let's just take it down to the to the bare essence. You go and you purchase a ticket. That ticket is now uh, now calculated with that with that with that bar that you that bar screen that you have on there. That's calculations of purchase amounts that come in to those numbers, and that take that does a calculation. So all the all the all the money that was generated in Toledo, all the money that was generated in Cleveland. All the money, Detroit, California, et cetera, et cetera, all that money that's driven in all those different places come to a calculation of a gross number. And that's how they base that. And another how they get those numbers to draft is populations. That's how you break down what they call uh, A markets, C markets, et cetera, et cetera. That's, and I'll, and I, I, if you ever want me to give a, a whole tutorial on all that, I can <laughs> do that later on. But I just I didn't want to get too 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 in depth with this, but I was just wanted to give you some insight of what they're saying that if you are in the industry right now, when you look at them numbers, you like you taking you taking an L. <laughs> you taking right. an L. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that uh interpretation of taking an L. Yeah. In my in my book, we like, <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, moving right along after that uh, nice seminar that you provided with us or for us. Okay, right. I got some news out of Michigan, man. The, um, okay. the, the coronavirus or COVID-19, it continues to rip through the state of Michigan. And I got a sad story to, uh, to read to you guys. It says, family to the coronavirus as husband and son die within days. It says a Michigan woman lost her entire family to the coronavirus as her husband and her only child died within days of each other. According to the report, it says Sandy Brown of Glen of Grand Blank. Are you familiar with Grand Blank, Michigan? Well, I don't know. I'm glad for the okay. Story. So she's suffering from the undescribable grief after losing her husband and her son, Freddie Lee Brown, Jr., uh, she said it's a pain that's indescribable. Oh man, you know what? Let me tell you. you let me tell you why this is interesting to me. Because uh, first of all, prayers go out to uh, you know, to her and her family. You know, Lord, uh, please yeah, give I give agree. them strength uh, that they can get through this. And uh, in Michigan, you know, it's it's really scary. You know, like uh, let me let me tell you why it's been scary for me. It's because. I've been on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and mm -hmm. uh, so I've been uh, like today. I was looking for not not just today, all this weekend. I was looking for uh, action figures. I want some action figures. You know, I'm a big Marvel fan, and so as I look at our our set, you know, our podcast set, you know, I said, you know what, I gotta get some. I gotta get some Marvel. I wanted some action figures around here, so I was on the prowl looking for some action figures, and all the ones I wanted. You know, uh, man, like the brand new ones, uh, they weren't they wouldn't be able to be here until like the middle of May. So I jumped on Facebook Marketplace because it's a it's a real good uh, after sale market for uh, for because uh, uh, I'm looking for 12 inch. I want 12 inch Marvel characters. 
And so there's a good aftermarket. Uh, they, they trade pretty good trade shows, uh, comic con stuff like that. And so I got on there to see, uh, who was selling what and everything. I, I found this lady up in, uh, Livonia and Livonia is probably about Livonia is North of Detroit. So it's probably like an hour and maybe 15 minutes, but, but I was scared to go get it. I mean, she had a good deal. I mean, she had like, uh, she had about eight of them. She had Thor. These, now these are 12 inches and these, these are the good ones. So she had Thor. She had Hawk. She had Thanos. Uh, she had Iron Man. She had Captain America and she had Black Widow and all, she had them all for $25 in good condition. And I was like, damn, you know, I was ready to come up on one, on one sale. So then, uh, so I was scared to go get it because I didn't want to go into Michigan, man. And then they had a, um, I don't know. I don't know if you know who the juggernaut is, the juggernaut. It's this big dude. You know, he's like, he's kind of reminiscent of the Hawk. And mm-hmm. so, uh, down in, uh, Dearborn, this guy had a, um, he had a juggernaut and he wanted $30 for juggernaut. And so my plan was to run up to Livonia and then swing down to uh, Dearborn on the way back to Toledo. And I said, man, I, I had a complete set of Avengers, man. And I'd be good. The set would be looking great, but I was, I was too chicken, man. And I read that story because Michigan, I mean, it's shutting people down. The bus driver complained about the lady coughing on the bus. And then he passed away a couple of days later and I ain't going to Michigan. <laughs> Oh man. Um, and then, uh, stay out, stay out of there, man. For yeah. A minute, man. And they were out of the box, you know, so they didn't touch them. So I would, you know, and well, the one lady, the lady that had the deal that had all of the characters, she said it was a porch pickup. She said, listen, she said, cash at me. I'm gonna leave them on my porch and you just come get them. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of a good deal. My wife was like, go get them. Just wear your mask. But but it's so many cases up there. It just make me think that it's just in the air. It just, I, you know, I got scared. I said, man, I'm going to cross into the Michigan. I crossed the Ohio state Michigan line and, and it'll be waiting for me. You know? <laughs> so I got chicken and I didn't go, man. So, so what did you say about your home state? Uh, stay out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you in Cleveland right now. You, you, you lamping in uh, Cleveland, right? Stay out of there. Okay. <laughs> Right. But here's something. Here's something that I, I I thought you would have brought up, man. Is that uh, you know, we both sports guys. ESPN is reportedly asking Stephen A. Smith and other top talents to take a significant three month pay cut. Woo! They're saying that Stephen A. Smith and Mike Greenberg are among those that have been asked to take a pay cut. I don't they said the two reportedly make eight million and six point five million respectively per year. ESPN isn't the first nor likely the last major sports outlet that would take a similar approach when it comes to talent and pay cuts over the coming months. What do you think? No, no, Stephen A. Don't do it. I don't because because they're risking their lives. Stephen A. is at the studio. Uh, uh, Max and Stephen, they're still they're still at the studio. So no, 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 ain't no pay cut because they're you know that you know because they're at the studio and kind of still out in this mess. Uh, you know that's like hazard pay. No, I don't. I don't believe they don't. They don't get no pay cut because they're still providing a service for the show, you know, without, uh-huh. without them, they wouldn't have anything. So no, okay. they, so, okay. E, so, okay. so no ESPN. No, you don't get a discount. No, you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't get a discount because they're keeping like, I matter. Ain't nothing going on. Only thing ESPN is doing is they're talking about, they still talking about old stories and they, and everything is like, like, cause I, I ain't watching it right now because they, they playing old games and I, I, ain't, I, I don't want to see no old games. And they talk, they're talking about old stories that was going on before Corona hit. And then everything is, well, when everything's back up and running, you know, and then it's just a bunch of little stories, a bunch of bullshit. And, and so Stephen A is the star right now, you know, uh, man. And when you, when I do watch it, they, they really stretching it. They just, you can tell that they're, 
they're 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 short on content and they just stretching everything out and it takes a talent to stretch everything out because I'm finding that out doing this podcast because you got to, you know, I think I think we do a good job of, of the two hours. But, you know, it, it's it's not it's like super easy. It's not, you know, super easy to uh, to stretch topics out to cover the length that you're doing a, a show for. But no, no. ESPN, no. Pay those guys their money. So, well, Spe- Trav, here's something I want to ask you about. Do you have your. Cowboys jingle ready to go. Can you play that real quick? Sure, sure. Let me let me find it here. Uh, you mean you mean the song that I written and perform? Yes. <laughs> you mean the, the song I has have as a re- a ringtone? Yes. Okay. Okay. By the way, it's called My Cowboys, featuring mm-hmm. featuring the the dope female MC Letta. Okay. Yo, DJ Big Trav, Cowboy Nation in Toledo, we straight doing this. Cowboy. What's my blue and gray team? Cowboy. And who I'm rolling with, huh? My Cowboy. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, you want me to play that? Now, because why? Now, because you guys are just amazing folks to me man. you better not Love. i know what shout you about out. to bring but i know what you about to bring shout up. out shout <laughs> out you set me up you set me up <laughs> you set me up man can't nobody rock a party like the, <laughs> like the cowboy uh, i wasn't i wasn't gonna bring that up i wasn't gonna bring that up let me tell you why that, I, I wasn't gonna bring that, that throws a party baby. you know what I don't and in the background was Zick. <laughs> I'm a diehard cowboy fan. I don't believe in in uh promoting our 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 negatives. I don't so any any of you cowboy fans out there that always promoting the negative stuff that we do, shame on you. I don't promote the bad stuff. That's that, that's not promoting. We just have a hey, listen, it's been on every outlet news that's out here, and it's like now, okay. we're not talking Go about ahead. on the field stuff. Go ahead and read the story. <laughs> oh, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, this was the thoughts about it, man. I mean, we, we you ain't even to, you haven't told everybody what it is to, to read the story. Well, okay, all right. Well, uh, let's let's use the word alleged. Allegedly, okay. okay. Uh, there was a, a a prime party over the weekend that went down and. You know, the one thing about these things, Trav, <laughs> is that uh, there's always somebody who can't hold water. And somebody took some pictures and decided that they wanted to post them. That was the most, that was that was what I was most upset about. You know, the lady that took the picture. I'm like, why you just couldn't kick it with them? Just kick <laughs> it with them, man. Why you got to take pictures, man? But at the same time, Dak and Zeke, they got to be, where they people at, man? Or not even you don't need your people. You know what I would have done? Okay, I would have I would have told everybody. You know what? Check your phones. You got everybody listen. I would have got a paper bag, plastic bag out, and I would have been like, everybody put their phones in the bag. Now let's kick it. You know, all right. You know what? Shame on them. You know, hey, listen, I'm a responsible person. So sh- it's a shame. Shame on them <laughs> for for uh, uh, orchestrating a a, a, a get together. Of more than I think they said it was thirty people there, so they orchestrated yep. a party of thirty people, and uh, you know they I don't know man, but you know what? But they're young. Remember, remember, you, listen. You're, you're you're in the middle of a you know, contract negotiation. You know what's gonna well. be a you know what's gonna be a constant theme. What our show is young people doing dumb shit. That's gonna be a constant theme. So uh, people that follow this show. I want you guys to know we're always going to reference when you do something stupid or you're in the news or you do something that just fuck everybody up. If you're under 25, it's, it's our, it's our opinion of this show that you just chalk it up to them being young and dumb. We just so you ch- saying that we're going to develop a segment that's going to be dedicated to people doing dumb shit. You know how Stephen a, if you pay attention to him, 
he always, one thing he always say about the Cowboys, he always call us the, the accident waiting to happen. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for yeah. it. Yeah. Wait and, for and it. So, and so, so, so from now on, when we're reading the story, and, it, and it's ridiculous, we're, you know, the first thing we're going to ask is how, how old were they? Because that provides context to what they're doing, you know. I mean, uh, and this is this is one of those instances. They, they're both under 25. They're both, I think they're 24 and 25. And when you 24 and 25, you do stupid shit. You know, that falls under the the uh the uh stupid shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so, yeah, but you know, hey, I just had to have a little fun with that. Okay, but I know you did. Here's a here's a little update from what me and you talked about and uh and actually we, you and I both was actually right about this. Okay. Dana White got shut down, shut, shut down, shut him down. And that's good. Shut him, shut that's him good. down. Because because you remember, I agreed. I, I, told, I said, no, I, didn't, I, well, I didn't agree. I didn't agree with it. I'm glad he got no, shut down. No, you agreed that he shouldn't have been doing it. Right, that's what you right, agreed. right, right. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Come but, on, man. What but, was you thinking about? But you know what? I, I, I bet he got shut down because the participants didn't want to do it. Not because... Uh, the it was a collective. It was a collective. Yeah, Remember, yeah. I told you last week that the the physicians, you know, physicians and everybody and the and the licensings and everybody was coming down on him. Like, wait a minute, hey man. Uh, see, remember I I brought up the argument about hey, here's this guy. He's on the phone with his shareholders. Just about what I talked about earlier about eight point nine billion dollars that's being lost in revenue okay if you are a controlling interest in the company trap and this is where i know i'm knowing you for as long as i've known you i kind of know where you what your response level is going to (laughs) be but you have i kind of feel him on the sense because that's a lot of that's a lot of heat man when you when you are just leaking and money is just going out the door and you like trying to put the holes in any way that you can to salvage, you know, this, 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 you know, flowing of money being lost. But at the end of the day, man, you just cannot put money over, over lives, man. You just, you, you just can't do that. Cause you, you know? cause you know, what's going to happen. See, this is a, uh, we're, we're going through, a a stage right now. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be in history books. This is gonna be considered the uh, the Corona period, and and I think that history is gonna judge you on what you done during the Corona period. You know, and and when they tell the stuff that the winners and the losers in the Corona period, um, you know, something like Dana White was trying to do if he would have went through with it. You know, uh, it would have been a bad look for his history profile. You know, I mean, you you want to be a winner in all this. You don't want to be a loser in this. You know, and uh, when when they're talking about the good things that you know, the people that respected the guidelines that the government set up, you know, we're going to praise those people. We're going to praise those people that that continue continue to to lift us up and and continue to to preach to everybody to follow the guidelines and and to practice social distances and all that stuff. So. Bad Dana, bad Dana, bad Dana. But anyway, let's move on, you know, to what we really wanted to talk about. I don't know if you got a chance to, to, to did you check out the RZA and DJ Premier uh, Instagram battle? If not, yeah. I, I, I put I put like a, a highlight on our page, but I got the full one. If anybody want to see it, I'll put it on our, um, I'm going to put it, I'll throw it on Instagram and I'll throw it on uh, our Facebook page. And then you can go check it out, man. Let me just say, first of all, did you did you see the whole thing? Let's roll with it. Did, did you see the whole thing? Let's roll. Okay, it. okay. First of all, off the top, it was boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was boring. These are the two most boringest dudes in hip hop. <laughs> these was the I, I, you know I love them. I love them to death. But it was the they didn't oh they oh it was you know uh Rizza couldn't get his audio right uh you, you know they 
you know, so they weren't, they weren't prepared or as prepared as they should have been. And it was just boring. They were boring guys. They really loved each other. You know, they came up together. And, and so it just, um, it wasn't, it wasn't that entertaining. It wasn't that. Entertaining. The music was awesome. No, the, I meant when you, uh, but, but what really, what shut it down for me, you know, RZA fell into that Manny Fresh category and that, you know, somebody said it was a tie, but no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't a tie. It wasn't no tie, man. The thing was, okay. Okay. This is the way you had to look at this. You had to look at this battle differently than we looked at the other ones. As I, as I, as I watched it and then I, I went to research it and review it, what would, what wouldn't have been fair for RZA is if I'd done it like, we done the other ones like by, by saying, uh, well, he don't have big hits. You know, he don't, uh, he don't have his bigger hits. It didn't for, it didn't come down to that. This was a battle for people, for hip hop heads. This battle was for hip hop heads, you know, and what you had to do in this battle was you had to listen. You actually had to listen to the beat. Forget. You had to forget what the numbers was. This was the first battle where you just threw the numbers out, throw the numbers out. They went round for round. And so that, you know, they, each of them played a beat. They went round for round and then they determined who won the rounds. Um, okay. With all that being said, maybe it was a tie because RZA has some tracks that I never heard before. And what you got to do is you got to take off your commercial. You got to take off your commercial hat. I mean, and, and what I mean by commercial is you got to just forget. Remember the other re, uh, battles we reviewed? It was all about billboards and, and Grammys and positions and money. In this battle, it wasn't about that. It was about just listening to the beat, man. Did the beat that RZA just played, was it just as hard or harder than the beat Premier played? And uh, and so that's what it came down to. But for for me... I gave Premier the edge because I was more familiar with more of the Premier songs than I was with the RZA songs. And let me tell you why. Because RZA, he he done he done what Manny Fresh done. He basically only produced for the Wu Tang members. He didn't do a lot of outside projects. He didn't do a lot. And uh and so, and, and he admitted that he admitted that during the uh, battle, he said, man, you know, I wish I had a got out and done more, uh, more work outside, you know? And so, um, so it was, it was boring, but you know, if you a hip hop head and I am a hip hop head, um, I just enjoyed the beat. Like RZA plays some beats that I never heard before, but when I heard them beats, I was just like, damn, that was pretty hard. <laughs> so so go ahead so so what did you think um i think you should move right along because you 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 summed it all up <laughs> it was listen what you was it what, what, come from, was it boring for what, you was, was it boring for yes, you okay it, yes it was anti-climatic at, at <laughs> best. uh you know i mean listen once you've had listen you know t-pain and 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 and, and little John, they just set the bar so high that you, it's just hard to eclipse that, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. And neither one of them had Grammys. Uh, Premier had been nominated three times, but that but neither one had Grammys. Uh, they do. They, their net worth is pretty good. You know. Um, you know. Both, of course. Uh, both both of, of their course. they they you know what what's evident about? Okay, well. Let me tell you, okay, comparing comparing their battle to everybody else's, this battle didn't have the big the big hits. It, it didn't. It didn't have the big hits. It didn't have those monster triple platinum. I meant they songs barely went platinum, you know, premiere. I mean, they were good songs. They were hip hop. They, they, they was they was classics. I'm gonna say half of them was classics. You know, that, that hip hop has love, but they didn't do big numbers, you know, but, but we still enjoyed them. We still enjoyed them. And, uh, and so, 
Uh, both of them are worth like their net worth is twenty million dollars, so they making good money. So obviously they they set up their careers right, um, and they're still touring. I mean, man, Wu Tang they just it's just worldwide, man. Everybody love Wu Tang, man, <laughs> and and I'm not one of them. But anyway, um, <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm not I'm not a Wu Tang fan, Clint. I'm not I'm not a fan. But anyway, um. But no, but it was still good look. I mean, I still, but I still appreciate music. I still appreciate good music. I appreciate good beats, and RZA has some dope beats. So, well, I hope you appreciate good film because this is a topic that was going on today that a lot of people had a lot of, a lot of things to say, Trav, and I wanted to run it past you okay. to see what you thought. There was a tally that went up about the top 90, 90s movies of all time. Really. Uh, yeah, and so I'm just gonna go with the top ten. Top ten. Let's and, let's hear let's hear this. And 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 uh, I'm gonna and I'm gonna say the names. And once I get finished, then you can go and you can tear each. You can say yay, nay, or whatever you want to say. Okay? Are they are they in order or just the top the top no, ten movies? I, I'm gonna give you the top. I'm starting with number ten all the way to number one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, number ten is Goodfellas. These okay. are these are just well, these are just movies in general or black movies. All of them. Okay. All the all the book. Okay, go now, ahead. Now okay, for our viewers that's never tuned in or we can't assume that they've heard of Goodfellas. It's a mob movie based on Nicholas uh Pisesky, who was a best selling novelist off the off of Wise Guys. And it's a false set of mobsters in the in New York in the in the sixties. In the seventies, so uh, it was. It's a six-time Oscar-nominated film from Martin Scorsese. May have debuted in nineteen ninety, but it will be talked about for the rest of the decade. So, number nine, Point Break. Some people may shame us for putting this nineteen ninety-one classic on this list, but we welcome you to embrace it when you watch it and see not only Keanu. But Patrick Swayze as shirtless and surfers in Southern California. So point break. Hated it. Uh wait a minute, Trav. <laughs> number and number eight, something about Mary. We have Cameron Diaz, Ben Stiller, and Matt Dillon with questionable facial hair and this romantic comedy about first love after viewing. You know, they give their commentary based off of that. So that's number eight. Loved it. Number seven. Number seven. Boys in the hood is always hard. Come talking to trash. We'll pull your card. 19. John Singleton's debut 1991 film about three men growing up in the Crenshaw ghetto of Los Angeles puts a narrative on America's screens that was always seen. That wasn't always seen. So that's number seven. Number six, Tommy Boy. The 90s to Chris Farley are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. When Tommy Boy came out, Farley was finishing up his fifth and final year at Saturday Night Live. And, what, and basically, they just say how they missed him. That was horrible. number. What is it? Oh, I, I, I hope. Hold this, on. That, hold on. Okay, go hold ahead. On. Go, go ahead. Hold go on. Ahead. Go ahead. I, I heard. I, I kind of know where you're going with this. Fargo, number five. The story of a husband who hires two criminals to kidnap his wife so he can receive a large ransom from his wealthy father-in-law was unforgettable in 1996. It's a crime movie that mixed in comedy, but, you know, it was directed and had a lot of film uh, awards, especially at the Canada Films Awards, blah, blah, blah. But that film is said it was voted to be number five. Never, number four. Never seen it. Number four. Boogie night. Boogie night. Make that move. Boogie Night was directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, put himself on the map with this 1997 film about pornography in the industry in the late 70s and early 80s with 
you know, basically with Burt Reynolds and Mark Wahlberg. I yeah. seen it. It was uh, it was okay. <laughs> uh, four weddings and a funeral on 1995. What a time to be alive. We were first really introduced to Hugh Grant. And that's what I got to say about that. Um, number two, Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., Renee Zellweger showed us the money in this instant classic from legendary journalist Cameron Crowe. Loved, Number one. Loved, loved it, loved it, loved it. Number one. Top movie that consensus says was the number one film in the 90s. Are you ready for this? Drum roll, please. Let me, let me. Thelma and Louise. Really? When Rydell Scott's thrilling adventure of two best friends on the run hit theaters in the summer of 1991 will forever change. It was one of the first movies that people saw that basically sparked the whole women's galloping movement that was going on. You know, it started, of course, Gina Davis and Susan Sarantin. Also, a young Brad Pitt, who was 26 years old. That was the movie that old. that was the movie that started Brad Brad Pitt's career. Yes. Uh, so for the for the most part, besides, <laughs> besides boys besides boys in the hood, all the uh -huh. other, all the other ones. Okay, let me let, let me just start. <laughs> let me just start. Good fellas. <laughs> Good fellas, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble remember it. Point blank, point blank. You having trouble remember good fellas? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not memorable. I remember, I, I just remember like sporadic parts of it. Uh, man, that's listen, man, listen, man. Movies. Only only gangster movie I like is Scarface. Man, all the other ones to me, all the other ones are trying to be Scarface. So why? So for me, I just like the best one. And then all the other ones are trying to be that movie. You well, know? that was being the '80s, so it wasn't. Oh, I take that back, going. Godfather. And no, they, they always trying to be Godfather too. So '70s. So, so Goodfellas. Uh, you know what? I wasn't that interested. Point Break. Never seen it. Um, something about Mary is probably my favorite movie on here. Uh, love, <laughs> love, Boys in the Hood. Tommy Boy. Uh, you know what? It didn't. You know, it was one of the movies that I watched it. It just didn't do nothing for me. But but let me but but let me, you know, what I want people to learn about me on this show is that I, I am I love it. I I'm love pro it. Go ahead, man. I, Go I, ahead. listen, I am pro action and sci-fi. I mean, if it's Marvel, DC, Star Wars, if you blowing up shit, if you got a spaceship, <laughs> if you got some type of powers. I'm rocking with you, man. If if you got a sweet car and racing cars, I mean, I'm all about the action, man. For me, for me, like go, like 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 Howard the Duck in a in a no, nah, that's no, nah, that's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but let me let me say this. I always tell my wife this. For me, Ooh. for me to go to the movie to see something at the movie, it, it got to be right. entertaining. I don't want to go to the movie to see a movie about real life. You know, about some shit that I see every day. I, I don't like to do that. I like to go. I like to go see a so movie. That's why you were disappointed with go Boys in the Hood. Uh, well, no, because up until up until I seen that, my life wasn't that. No, that was very entertaining. And Ice Cube was in it. That's all you had to say was Ice Cube was in it. I went to go see the movie because Ice Cube was in it. Because I was, you know, my neighborhood was big Ice Cube fans. So we went to go see it because because that was because we didn't know who the hell Cuba Gooden Jr. was. Nia Long, we didn't know about her yet. Morris Chestnut, we ain't know about. We ain't even know. We ain't even know Lawrence Fishburne and um and uh ba Angela Bassett. We didn't even know them. We just knew Ice Cube. So, so uh uh Tommy Boy, whatever. Fargo, never seen it. Boogie Nights, you know what I I I liked it. <laughs> I like Boogie Nights, but it was a but it was a movie Ooh. about porn, and I watch porn all of the time, so that just wasn't nothing. New. <laughs> so that wasn't nothing new for me. Uh, <laughs> um, a wedding and a, a wedding and a funeral. Uh, I never Try. seen, you never seen that. Funny, <laughs> never seen that. Jerry Maguire loved it. Matter of fact, no, you know what? Jerry Maguire is my favorite movie on here. 
Jerry Maguire is my favorite. You know, show me the money. That's what I'm talking about. Thelma, Thelma and Louise, who cares? You know? <laughs> oh, um, come on. Don't do that. Uh, you know, I know it was a kind of a, a coming of age movie for women or or <laughs> or or, no. or 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 a woman's friendship. Uh, you know, ride, you know, listen, ride or die, friends and all that. I I, I get the premise of it, but uh, I'm, listen, but let me say this. I'm not shitting on Thelma and Louise. I'm not shitting on it, but it just wasn't a movie for me. You know, uh, it was like a date movie. Uh, I can imagine. I, 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 I didn't see it at the theater. I seen it, you know, like at the crib. And so I seen it okay. by myself, but I can imagine if I would have seen it at the movies on a date, I could have possibly cried, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you crying at a movie. Are you crying? Because it was sad to see him dry the, the, the damn drop top off the damn cliff at the end, man. <laughs> <laughs> they fucked up a nice car. Oh, my God. They so, up- basically, anybody that's tuned in and has never saw the movie, there you go. You got the end. Listen, if, if, <laughs> if you like coming of age women movies about women's friendships and 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 your bestie being a ride or die this is your movie this is your movie you know this is two people sticking together you know when when a person say i'm a ride or die i'm with you to the end i'm with you to the to the to the wheels roll off that's thelma and louise so uh yeah no uh-uh, no it was it, it was a cool movie you know, for, for I saw nine out of the ten movies. I'm with. What you was on your Fargo. favorite movie? What was your favorite movie on I that did, list? The fa- my favorite movie on, on that, that list. On, on that list. Ooh, I would have to go with. I'm gonna have to say something about me. I love that film, man. I did too. I liked it. I that liked movie it. was too. That. Ben Stiller in the '90s was too funny, man. He said. He said. So. Uh, so you can milk a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so. But, let, but here, but here's something I want to ask you because in in my hood, where I was at, Boys in the Hood was like eh, compared to Menace to Society. It's like when Menace to Society came out, it was like Boys in the Hood was like boring compared to that. Yeah, it was. It was. You know what? Let me tell you. I got a. Let me tell you, I, I was when, you know, what Boys in the Hood was one thing, but Menace was, it was just, <laughs> it was brutal. You see, you it was see brutal. how you emphasized on the words yeah, on that? it was but brutal. Menace. It, it was brutal. It was brutal. But Menace. Now, let me tell yes. you, okay, I think the, I think in the beginning of the movie, when they smoked Harold ass, that fucked me up. <laughs> they just smoked that nigga when Sam, they when they I smoked did not Harold. Even know that was Samuel Jackson and and, and, and you know and uh, it took me a minute. Then uh, he was like, "You want me some money too, motherfucker?" No, but here you yeah hit yeah damn. yeah that I didn't know, but he he made cameos. He was like the king of cameos for a while. You know what? Man. That didn't bother me as much. That was just two dudes. To me, that was just two dudes getting mad over like a, a card game, which is, was normal. But what wasn't normal to me was a nigga getting carjacked. Like Toledo, we wasn't, you you heard about it, but that was my first time ever seeing one on camera. And it fucked me up, man. Harold was like, he said, he said, uh, he told, what's his name? He said, uh, uh, Kang, get out the car. <laughs> and then he was like, and, and Kang looked at him like, what you about to do? He was like, I ain't going out like nothing. What'd he say? Who said he ain't, did he, did he say Willie Lump Lump? I don't know what he said, yeah. but he, but he yeah. said, I ain't going out. No, he said, I ain't, I don't know what he said, but he said, I ain't going out like no bitch. And, they, right. and he was like, nigga, we, he was like, nigga, we told you to get out the car. And they just smoked that nigga, man. I was just, I like, know. And it, it did. It, 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 it affected me, man. It, 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 it bothered me. It really did, man. It, Cause I just had never seen it. I was like, is that how they do it? Are, are you for, for real? And they got his ass, man. And then I, was, I liked the boys in the hood, but. It was like when Menace to Society came out, it was like, yo. Now, when when New Jack City came out, it was like, yo, yo, yo. I was like, yo, come on, man. It was it New was Jack kinda City, hard. New Jack City was fun. You know, it wasn't as it wasn't as hard as Boys in the Hood and Menace, but 
but it was it was I, you I crazy. enjoyed you know you know no, listen yes, I didn't, it was. No, hold on hold on let, let me tell you I didn't okay. Nino Brown I thought he was I thought he was fun and cool see I looked at I looked at the boys in the hood and menace them to me those was like those was thugs man they'll kill your ass but Nino Brown was I I, I liked it I guess that you know he wore suits he was a boss he was suave. You know, so I was paying more. But attention. he was identify. He, you can identify because yeah. I'm just saying, coming up in Detroit, I knew a lot of people that had that personality of a Nino Brown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so but, but I can I can identify with a, a, a character. I threw him. him in. A, I threw him in the pimp class. You know, the Don Juan class. He was he just, wasn't a pimp. He was though, just no, man. no. I'm just saying, but I just appreciated his his smoothness. You know. Uh, you know, but nah, but boys in the hood menace, they was like, nigga, I straight smoke you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But but Nino, I guess Nino had his people doing it. Rock a bye, <laughs> rock a bye, baby. <laughs> that was, you know, not but that didn't bother me. I don't know if that didn't bother me. Yo, five dollars ass down before I make ten. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that didn't memorable bother me. scenes. Memorable scenes, man. I said I don't. I don't know if that didn't. That didn't bother me as much as menace and 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 boys because a female done it. I don't know, but it it was still gangster. It was gangster. She just no. It was still good. Yeah, it I was mean, gangster. listen. You know the end of the end of boys in the hood. You know, and I don't know. It, you know, and I just remember people commenting like, "Why is he running straight? He should have ran this way. He should have jumped this way." You know, he, what makes him think he could outrun that? You know, it was. That, uh, I loved it, man. You know, I love. So. I love Christopher Ricky. Williams' part. You know, I love. Are we? Am I my brother's keeper? You know what I'm saying? I, I enjoyed all of that. It was just. Uh, it was just a. Uh, do you think? Do you think the music? In, the in, music. In, it was everything. It. it was everything. Okay. It was everything. Overall, as far as as far as the the scripts to all three, let, let's put all three of them in there. The scripts, the writing, the directing, uh, the quality of movie. New Jack City was a better quality movie, and it was better writing in the New Jack City movie than it was boys in the hood but but a hood movie it don't have to have great writing it don't have to have great writing so i was fine with that but i enjoyed and then it had ice t in it it was just uh it had more people that i was familiar with and so Alan Payne, yeah man. man it was man it was just people was, was going crazy really, on the girls i'm talking about alan people loved alan Payne back in the i days, really enjoyed man. um uh uh was uh Mario Chris Van Rock, Peoples, Chris, Ro- Chris oh, Rock. Oh, okay. I really enjoyed Chris Rock's performance in that movie, man. That was really, that was really nice, man. That was nice. So that was good. Okay, man, we got to get out of here, man. I have some more stuff to go, man. But you, you, you was ready to go today, man. Shout out to my man Q. Let's let's give let's give uh, Q an, an applause. <laughs> Q was on point today. Well, thank you, brother. I mean, you know, anytime my man I'm, was on point today. I, I gotta live. I gotta. I gotta live up to the cue. Yeah. The big thing, you know what I mean? For you know sure. I mean? For sure. For sure. So oh. I'm excited, man. Once again, I want to stress: we got a jam packed week coming up, starting with Blaine Smith on Wednesday. Okay, we got Blaine we got, on Wednesday. We got Stephanie on Thursday. Thursday. And then got come on, man. Got my boy to, Cocaine. To, 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 to just, I mean, come on, man. To end that Friday, I can't wait to Friday, man. Friday is gonna be crazy. We're gonna. Did you do? Did you start doing your homework on him, or you already? Know? Uh, no, 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 no. I haven't. I haven't started. I haven't started. Ooh. I haven't started. I, I was looking for it. I was looking for his his track. That is gonna be a must see. That's gonna be a must hear or a must see or however you watching us. You do not want to miss that interview, man. You talking about Ruthless Records, all the above, Easy E, Dr. Dre, Tupac, Snoop. I can just go on and on and on. You definitely exactly want to be here for us on that. Definitely, definitely. And like we always do about this time, make sure you uh, head on over to the, our YouTube page. Please subscribe. We're trying to get our subscribers up. Like I said, I'm a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a promo about going to our YouTube link and subscribing. 
I'm going to provide you with the link. And then the only thing you got to do is just go on it, hit the link, subscribe, and then get out of there. You ain't got to sit there and watch everything. Even though we got all of our shows on there and some other content on there uh, that, that you might enjoy. But um, also hit us on Instagram. Uh, we post uh, stories to uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook like daily, all day long. So if you want to, uh, if you want to keep up on everything that's going on in the entertainment world, uh, uh, sports, uh, just hit our page. If you, if you ever want, if you want to know what's trending, just hit our page. Just hit us on Facebook, Twitter. And Trav, don't forget, man, you itemize each podcast. So if there's something specific that you want to watch or you wanted to know what that particular topic was on that particular day. You got it on there, listed on there, so you don't have to I basically I go back and. I didn't think you know. You, I, I didn't think you noticed. Oh, there you go, <laughs> man. There you go. Well, anyway, hey, until tomorrow, I am Big Trav, and he is. He's Q. Yo, yo, yo. They waiting for just another damn podcast. Now let's go. Go, 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 go. It's the Big Trav and Q Show. So what you gonna do, bro? Q is from D-Town. We chillin' in the Momo. Travis from the mud. We call it Glass City. Swoop some red bones. And they was acting shifty. It's the Big Ballin' Podcast. All the others hot trash. Six o'clock on the dot. Better make a quick dash. All the hot topics getting played in the tropics. We pickin' up steam. Yo, Q, they can't stop it. Let's go. Let's go.